Hey everyone, if you are a piano player at your church uh, and you do any of these five things, you need to stop doing those right away. Okay. Also, if you are a veteran musician and you're like, hey man, I'm good, uh, maybe you know somebody else that needs to hear this. So please share this video with them. Uh, it can be your polite way of telling them, hey, you need to work on this. Like, no, like you really need to work on this. Um, and so uh, that can be your way of helping them out. But uh, the very first thing I want to talk to you about uh, that you need to stop doing right now is overusing the sustain pedal. And right now uh, in, in uh, contemporary worship, a lot of us play keyboards where we even layer maybe a pad sound. So the overuse of the pedal is actually a, a greater issue there. Okay. We, we don't always hear that sustain in worship because we have other instruments going on. Um, but sometimes we have people that don't realize they're still holding on to a chord uh, or, or some pitches, and uh, we have a lot of extra notes that are layering over from previous uh, um, chords that you that you should have already moved on from, right? And so I'm going to uh, play a um, a piece of, of music here of just the uh, the, bri the sorry the pre-chorus of the anthem um, in the key of D. You're going to hear a lot of chords that are you know walking up. Uh, in, in order, and so, um, you, you know, that's really where you get to hear a lot of the clashing uh, nature, the dissonance of these, of these chords if you're not careful. The power of sin is broken, Jesus overcame it all. Okay, especially at the end when we have that walk up, after uh, in between phrases, the vocal phrases, excuse me, uh, we have this going on. If I don't take my foot off of that, then it's basically like having a cat just come and like take a nap on the piano, right? Uh, you want to avoid that by taking your foot off for every chord. So really that should have been, okay? And then once we get to the E minor chord, that's all I hear. I don't hear the chords in between. Now that is a really exaggerated example of that, uh, but there are some other examples that maybe even going from a chord, uh, maybe a one chord to a four chord, in this case, a D to a G, um, you know, those, some of those notes actually agree a little bit better than the, the example that I played for you. And you may not realize because you don't hear as much of the dissonance, but uh, listen for your playing and listen to see if there's parts uh, where you, you've, you've moved on to the core, to a different chord and you're still holding. Uh, and so uh, just be really careful. All right, so the second thing that you need to stop doing right away uh, if you're a piano player and you're doing these things um, is playing everything in root position. Now, um, because we do have slash chords, you know, or inverted chords, I'm going to be speaking more about the right hand, okay, the chording, not the bass, okay? The bass, you know, a lot of times that's going to be dictated for you on, on, the, on the chord charts, right? Let's say you're playing a D over F sharp. Well, you know, yeah, it's it's obviously not in reposition, but I might be playing, you know, the right hand in reposition. And so what I mean by reposition is anytime you have a chord, uh, let's say in this case, the, a D chord, okay? Um, when you um, figure out how to play a D chord, you're going to use a D, an F sharp, and an A to build your triad. Um, and a lot of times we, you know, as young musicians, you know, uh, when you're starting out, you think that every time you play a D, it has to be... In, in, in that order, the notes have to be ordered in that uh, in that sequence right there. And that is not the case, okay? So uh, I would encourage you to listen for whatever the melody is. Maybe try to have some, some variety in the notes that you put on, on, on as the very highest note. All right, everyone, I'm not super fancy or anything. I don't have a, a like a nice little rig set up so you can watch me play with both hands. So I'm gonna have to hold the phone with my left hand, but I'm just gonna show you again what I'm doing with my right hand. Uh, the the chord that I was starting off on that um, pre-chorus of the anthem was an E minor chord. Normally we'd play, you know, just E, G, B, and that's our triad. I was actually playing B, D, and a G, okay? I was using the seventh instead of the actual E, right? So we're um, not playing the, the, the chord in, um, in root position, okay? Uh, we're actually in, I guess, what you would call a uh, second inversion, right? But um, uh, the, the way that this, the melody goes, the power of sin is broken. Notice how the contour of the melody goes down. I, I'm going from a G to F sharp. You can do the same thing with the chord. Power of sin is broken. Next thing you know, you have to go to a D over F sharp chord. Guess what? You're already on a D here and an F sharp there. 
all you got to do is bring this note down, okay? That's what, you know, trying to find inversions and ways to get out of root position world every single chord, will, that's what that'll do. It'll make it easier for you to find the next chord, okay? And then guess what? The chord after that, Jesus overcame it all. All I can do is go to that A chord right there. Um, and I'm and that one actually is in root position, uh, A, C sharp, E. And when I bring the F sharp down to the E, that's the melody. Jesus overcame it all right there, that pitch. That's the, that, that is the melody. So um, getting out of root position land where you're going, the power of sin is broken. Pick up your hand, move everything down. Jesus overcame it all. Um, yes, that works. You're playing the right chords, but it's not nearly as smooth as doing uh, what I just showed you with the inversions, okay? So get out of root position land and start using some inversions. And not only that, be intentional about which one you use, because I bet you every single chord you're playing, somewhere in there is the melody note, okay? Uh, and you can really, uh, you know, kind of uh, expand your playing, evolve your playing, uh, if you're intentional about what note you put towards the top, all right? All right, the third thing that you need to stop doing right away is playing everything in C, okay? And I know that we love playing in C sometimes because, hey, it's, you know, it's really hard to hit a wrong note. So what, what I encourage you to do is to uh, figure out how to play in different keys. And let me show you how I did this, okay? So what I did is I found a song that I knew how to play really well, okay? Uh, and then I would modulate that from, from key to key uh, this particular song, okay? That song for me was, is actually a Spanish worship song, and I'm gonna fly through that really fast. I won't use the metronome uh, because this video will may be really, really long if I play it, you know, at tempo uh, in every key. But um, uh, that song for me, again, was Tu Fidelidad, uh, and so I would play in, in a safe key, something that I, I, I call a familiar key, uh, there's there's no hard keys. There are only familiar ones and unfamiliar ones, right? So the unfamiliar ones are the ones that we call hard. We just haven't practiced them enough, right? So um, uh, I would play that song through. Fidelidad es grande. Tu fidelidad incomparable es. Okay, and I would play through the whole song. And then I would find what I call the pivot chord, okay? Now, uh, that's a whole nother uh, a video that I'm gonna get to maybe down uh, down some at some point in the future. Uh, but then I would modulate and play. Tu fidelidad es grande. Keep going, you know, and, and just walk up, go from D uh, to E and then E to F and just modulate. And sometimes I would make the modulation to the black keys too and find ways to be able to incorporate those uh, because you want to be able to play in any key. One other thing that you can really get out of this is that um, when you start playing in different keys, the shape that your hand makes uh, when you switch chords can actually help you be able to find new like embellishments and new ways uh, to adorn your music, okay? Uh, and so I, I had a roommate in college that loved playing in B. He had massive hands. I mean, they're like baseball clubs, and, and, but, but he, it just, he loved playing B because his, his hands just opened up and they settled nicely on the keys. And so um, it, 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 for him, playing in B was really, really fun and, and really easy. Um, but whenever I play in B, I have to think a little bit more, but I know how to play in B. Uh, but the other thing is that I, I noticed that I can do certain reaches and certain um, little runs a little bit easier than I could maybe in a different key, like an A flat key or something like that. So uh, anyway, I, I, again, I encourage you to get out of C and maybe for you, your, your, your safe key isn't C, it's something else. Um, but whatever that safe key is for you, uh, get out of that. Start trying to work on modulating and play a song that you know really well. And that'll get you, you know, um, it'll keep you comfortable because you know the song, uh, you know the chord progression. Try to get out of your safe key, uh, and obviously not just C, but whatever that key is, and and work on modulation, and, and uh, just get get to the point where you can play uh, uh, in that song in any key. Uh, and should you need to play in B one day or an F sharp one day, uh, you you've done it at least once before. All right, the next thing that you need to stop doing right away if you are playing piano at church uh, is playing uh, in, in cluttered spaces, okay? Uh, there may be a, a part in a song, uh, and there's just no room um, for, for something else, okay? So I encourage you to try to find 
ways to um, uh, limit your playing. And it may mean that your well-rehearsed lick that you spend a lot of time trying to work on uh, doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't end up getting played that Sunday. Uh, maybe you save it for another song or something like that, but it's gonna make the whole group sound better, right? And so I encourage you to um, watch, I actually have another video coming out here really soon uh, where I'm gonna talk about a, a, a spot in, in a certain song where uh, it's actually a very open space. Every church I've ever heard uh, do this particular song, um, they always leave that space open. And so what I did at my church, I actually started playing a little bit of a, of a filler lead line in there. Um, and so I just look, be on the lookout for that video here really soon. Uh, but main thing is just, you know, listen to the whole group. Is there room? Am, am, is my, you know, playing going to be distracting or covering up and cluttering up something else that's going on? Uh, just be really careful. Um, I, at some point, we will all go through that phase where we like to play uh, and, and just, you know, maybe every drum fill you know or, you know, uh, every every lick you know has to you know fi find its way into every song. Uh, we got to grow out of that. Okay, at some point we got to grow out of that. I know I went through that a lot uh, a long time ago, and uh, every now and then it, it rears its ugly uh, face again. And I've got to be really really disciplined to not uh, succumb to that. So I encourage you to listen. That's the main thing you can do is listen. Uh, is there room for this? This is this lick that I'm about to do. Um, it, does it, it, it does it match? Is it characteristic of the style? Um, but main thing is, 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 am I covering something else up? Okay, so uh, main thing is use your ears and you'll figure it out. And if you've made it to the end of this video, I wanna thank you for your time and I encourage you to share this with anybody that might need these uh, pointers. I wanna tell you this last one, instead of using double negatives and telling you to stop not using your volume knob. I'm going to tell you to use your volume knob to fade in and out, okay? Uh, and there may be, may be times in service where you're playing and then, you know, maybe uh, we're going to transition into, you know, something else going on. And rather than just abruptly stopping uh, your playing, you just want to make sure you fade out a little bit at a time so it's just not awkward, okay? Uh, the other thing is maybe at, at, at the end of service uh, as your pastor is closing up the message. Um, I know our pastor likes for there to be some uh, light panel music in the background. If the, your pastor's wrapping up uh, a, a, a sermon and you know he's making some really good points and um, uh, I, I would encourage you not to come in with this this nonsense right here. Yeah, if you do that, ain't nobody going to get saved. Ain't nobody going to listen that, to that altar call. Hopefully people still get saved, but uh, you're going to be a distraction, okay? And so what I encourage you to do instead uh, is start a little bit softer. Even if people don't hear your first notes, you just start playing a little bit and slowly work up uh, as you're playing uh, so that people don't notice your entrance, okay? You want to be very, very, uh, um, like, discreet in your playing. Um and then uh, you slowly bump it up to maybe your, your volume uh, and whatever your volume is there in that, in that particular scenario might be a little bit softer than your worship uh, um, set volume, right? So again, just using your volume on being sensitive uh, to the situation, I encourage you to do that. Uh, fade in and out during, during transitions like that. Uh, it's a really, really good way just to be tasteful and considerate of what's going on. Uh, we are in fact in ministry, right? And so we don't want to be a distraction to what's going on. Uh, we want there to, to be, you know, uh, a nice flow of, of service. And that's a good way to maintain that, uh, that flow. So uh, again, I just encourage you to watch this video uh, or share it with some that might be in this stage in their development. Uh, and I hope that you've gotten something out of this one. I know it's a longer one, but uh, it's certainly some very necessary things that need to be said. Uh, and uh, a lot of things I wish somebody had told me uh, whenever I was uh, growing up and playing. A lot of these things I kind of had to figure out on my own or maybe eventually somebody did tell me. Uh, but uh, feel free to share this video and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much.